What is going on you guys? Cisco here and I have Boaz with me and today we are going to be talking about our play carrier setups. A lot of you guys online have been curious about how we run our play carriers and why and we're going to go over that today. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. The past few videos, we have gone over our gear setups, such as our belt setups that we like to run, as well as our helmets. And if you haven't seen that already, go ahead and check that out on our channel. I'll put it up there. <laughs> and uh, Cisco, why don't you go ahead and start off by telling us what play carrier are you running and why did you choose it? Sure. So the play carrier that I am currently running is going to be the Shellback Banshee play carrier. This is the original version, not the 2.0 that they recently released. The reason I picked it was because of uh, how small it is. Even though I'm a bigger guy, I wanted it to be compact, something that I could like just easily keep in a car or a bag or something. And uh, I wanted the Molly space to carry everything that I needed that I will get into in a little bit. Yeah, I think the Banshee is a very solid option. I believe also Condor makes a similar version called the Cyclone, yep. if I'm not correct. Yeah, yeah very I, similar. I, I've actually run both uh, in the past and they're pretty solid. Yep, I should have. I, see, I got mine to Multicam. I wanted Coyote, but. I, don't know. I mean, it looks great. I think it looks nice. Yeah, but uh, something that the badge, at least I don't think uh, Shellback has, is the Multicam Black, which is the, what the Condor has. Mm. Before we get into the nitty gritty and start talking about exactly what is on our plate here, like pouches and accessories, why don't we first talk about how to set up your plate here? Like, there is a right and a wrong way to do it. Yes, sir, that is correct. So, starting off is going to be actually wearing the plate carrier. You want to set it up so the top of the plate is going to be sitting right at the collarbone so it covers all of the vital organs such as the heart and the lungs um, to make sure that you are well protected. Uh, I do notice that uh, a lot of people on the airsoft field don't make it secure to the body and they'll let it like sag and uh, if that works for you, you know, go for it. That's that's the way you do it. But in like a real firefight, it won't give you the protection that you need. Yeah, and more importantly, the plate carrier was designed to sit at that specific height. Yep. So if you let it sag, ultimately you're not letting it perform to its intended purpose. Yep. And additionally, is my biggest thing is you have to wear, or I believe you should wear plates in your plate carrier. Whether they're yep. real plates or fake plates, the plate carrier itself was designed to be a rigid, solid system. So that way it's not bending or it's not flapping on you. Yeah. And I have noticed that on the field as well, especially the younger players out there, I know you guys like to run, especially the JPCs. Yeah. You run JPCs without any plates, keep it very slim to your body. And you know, again, that works for you, that's great. But again, the plate carrier, the way that it was designed yeah. was to have plates in there. So I believe you have, you have real plates in yours, right? I do, I do have uh, real level three plates in here and it does make a solid base mm. for the pouches themselves to not like exactly. wobble around. Wobble too much, yeah. Wow, you must be a crossfitter using weight and plates. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, at least in the airsoft world, there's two main options to go to. I would say there's the foam plates and there's a hard plastic plates. Right now, I'm currently running the Lancer Tactical hard plastic plates. I believe, I think, in my opinion, they're a bit more rigid. Yep. So it stays a little bit more firm to my body, and I think overall it feels more comfortable, in my opinion, than the foams. If you guys can't afford either one of those plates, that's fine. For a number of years, when I first started running plate carriers, I actually didn't buy any uh, plate, plate inserts. Yeah, I would actually go into my garage and get those Amazon boxes that are like oh, yeah, yeah. the right size. I was just about to say. Yeah, so I basically layered five of those <laughs> together, taped them all together, and those are my fake plates. And you know what? Yeah. They're they're almost just as rigid as yeah, a hard definitely. plastic plate. Yeah. So yeah. that that's the very budget friendly option is to <laughs> at saying. least get the carbon. But at least have something in there guys. All on that budget. So it's nice and rigid on on your body because that's the way that the plate carrier was intended to be used. Yes, sir. Now that we got all the basics out of the way, why don't we go ahead and talk about what is on our plate carrier. So starting with you, Cisco, again, why don't we talk about what is on your plate carrier? Sure. So right up front, I have three Double Decker Tacos from HSGI. I really love these tacos because they can fit any type of magazine that I own, and they just stay rigid. I would like to be able to like re-index my magazines fairly easy. I'm able to hold three rifle magazines and three pistol magazines, but those can be dual use as well for such things like the knife, a multi-tool, maybe even cam lights, uh, just so I can, you know, use it for whatever I need to on the field. Behind that, I actually have a dual uh, magazine insert from Shellback for the plate carrier itself to hold an extra two magazines. Uh, the reason for that is so I can hold extra magazines. What, what, what the <laughs> <laughs> Going to the top of the plate carrier, I added HSGI shoulder pads. 
Uh, the play carrier doesn't come with any type of sort of pads, and I decided to use these because of how low profile they are with the rubber padding that they have underneath. Um, it makes it very comfortable and allows the play carrier to stay still without shifting uh, on my shoulders, which is something that I ran into with other play carriers that I've run. Uh, on my sides, I actually swapped out the cummerbund that comes with the plate carrier for Shellback Tacticals uh, Quick Release Cummerbund. So it does have just a single buckle here on both sides and uh, this makes it very easy to put on and take off the plate carrier without having to lift the Velcro strap and then, you know, like, it's very messy. I, I really like doing that. Right now, the plate carrier is small for me and I am running it a little bit lower than my collarbone, which I am taking that risk. Uh, if I were to be using that in like uh, the real world scenario, but uh, it's like I said, it's comfortable for me, and I look like a s'more right now. The marshmallow, like when you when you squeeze down like that, just that's how I look like right now. But it's comfortable. It's low profile. I accept that I look weird, but it gets the job done. I don't know, man. It sounds like you're looking a little tasty. If you're asking me. <laughs> and moving to my back panel, I do have a small admin pouch by Condor. That's just to hold band aids, notes, maps, pens, anything that uh, a teammate can grab for me. I'll store it back there. And then to the left of that, I do have a TAC 9 radio pouch that holds my Baofeng UV5R. Connected to that, I have my Code Red speaker mic that is routed through the Molly and the shoulder pads of my left side that bring it directly to the left side uh, of my play carrier so I can easily talk into it and get in contact with teammates. So now that we've gone over my play carrier, Boaz, what play carrier are you running and why? So currently I am running the TMC 6094 style play carrier. I'm sure it's under a different product name. Anyway, I have run, like I said before, a Shellback Banshee as well as the Condor Cyclone. I've actually run both in the past and those are both very solid play carriers. I would recommend them for any intermediate or advanced player, but eventually I stuck with this play carrier for the sole reason of where the shoulder straps are placed. And so for me, the first thing I look for in a plate carrier is where are the straps located? So with the 6094 style plate carriers, guys, the shoulder straps are right over here at the top. And a lot of the plate carriers nowadays, or in the past, they'd run them more wide out here. And the reason why I like them more closer to my neck actually is because of the space it leaves in your chest when you shoulder the rifle. Okay. And so when I'm shouldering a rifle, a lot of times I notice in the past that my shoulder pad actually gets in the way, or the strap. Yeah. It gets in the way, and so I have to like kind of negotiate with it a little bit, and it's not it's mm -hmm. not very fast, and it's not very comfortable after a while. Yeah, definitely. So I, I really hated fighting that, and so eventually I kind of stuck with this. So this is kind of what stuck for me. And the philosophy behind this play here is that I want to have something that I can, like, like you said, just grab and go. Anything from a day's worth of play out on the field to a weekend long Milsim event. I want something that can be as minimalist as possible, but have just enough to fit both of those categories of play. Definitely. So I've noticed that you kept it very bare bones up front. Can you explain the pouches that you're using and why? Yeah, so over here in the front, as you can see, I'm not really running any pouches visibly. Yep. So a long time ago, I used to run the Blue Force gear, the, the helium, speed, the helium yeah. yeah, that pouches because they were super low pro. But one of the biggest issues I ran into that is re-indexing the magazines. Oh yeah. And so eventually, I ended up biting the bullet and buying the was it the GMR custom. 6094 oh. insert, which is very expensive. Oh my goodness. But <laughs> it is significantly more closer to my body while running mags as compared to running an external magazine pouch. Because already inside the kangaroo insert. And so unlike yours, the Banshee, another reason why I moved away from it is because I can hold three, three magazines instead, instead of two. Yeah. Very nice. So they click into place really nicely. Uh, and if you guys see my battle belt video, I primarily reload from my belt. So I don't actually reload from my chest. And so I don't really need anything super immediate on my chest because whenever I'm reloading, I'm reloading from here and not here. And anytime there's downtime in a firefight, I'm always moving mags from here back down to my hip. Nice. And so on top of that, these actually protect your mags really well, especially if you go prone a lot. Like I go prone pretty frequently, yeah. especially out in the dirt and the dusty areas. You know, they can mess up your mags pretty hard. He's one of the only guys that I know that'll go prone. <laughs> He's not afraid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and that's because I'm protecting all my mags inside my insert. I think Papa Ronan from GMR really did his homework. He's really done a lot of product research. And I think the products kind of speak for themselves. I've taken this insert to hell and back. I mean, it's like kind of sort of falling apart, but it's, <laughs> I mean, but it's, but it's still working great. And right below that, I have the Woti Sport. Forget, I, I just call it a Fupa pouch because yeah. it, it just protects my, my underbelly, the <laughs> tender spots where I get shot 
a lot from and it's also super useful just because it has all that storage space for whatever you have usually I just put my wallet and my keys in there yeah. sometimes my phone depending on how adventurous I'm feeling uh, or if I need any spare batteries or if I need a dead rag a map something yeah. anything with quick access to I'll just throw in here real quick yeah. and it's super useful guys I would highly recommend if you guys are running a play carrier run something like this yeah see I wanted to add one of these to mine but because of the system that it has I'm not able to and I'm really jealous of, of that because I actually run this same pouch on one of my chest rigs. And same thing, I'll keep the speed loader in there, the keys to my car, um, an extra battery, just whatever I need. It's so useful having like an admin pouch with that much storage space and it not be in the way. And one of my favorite additions to my play gear setup actually that I do not see many of you guys running out there are glove clips. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. So, these glove, glove clips I just picked up on Amazon. I think they're they're very affordable. It's like a three pack, like six bucks or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You, you can you can pick them up for super cheap on Amazon. And I've actually learned this while I was in college. So when I was in film school and when I work on uh, professional film sets and stuff, I always run this on my belt. Or I also have a dedicated chest rig for my film equipment. Oh, nice. And I just run one here because a lot of times you're moving heavy equipment or equipment that's hot. Like a lot of these lights that we're using, they get hot after a while, especially oh, yeah. if they're on for like a few hours at a time and so sometimes you need that extra hand protection nice. when you're working so i'm not wearing gloves all the time just because it makes my hands super sweaty but it's always nice just to have these quick access glove clips that you can just that put is, your gloves on yeah when you need it, really yeah slick. and when you don't need it you just clip them back in and for me personally i lose my gloves pretty often i'm always like where's my gloves but yeah. now that i start wearing these glove clips on my plate here it's whenever i'm not Using them on the field, just clip them right in. Yeah. I'll never have to lose them again. And you know exactly where they're at. I might, I'm gonna need to look into those, add that to my kit, because that's actually really cool. On the top of my plate carrier, I'm running the Shellback Tactical Aftermarket Shoulder Pads. Uh, Shellback Tactical actually does offer a lot of good aftermarket support, as you've seen previously here. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. they make some really solid products. So these are probably my favorite shoulder pads out of all the ones I've tried before. And the reason being is just because they offer so much padding. Yeah. And so it basically prevents your plate carriers from digging into your neck, like the shoulder straps. Yep. And especially when I used to run real steel plates on my airsoft plate carrier back in the day, these saved my life just because yeah. just because um, it's not digging into my neck. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I, I would recommend, yeah, guys, if you're running a plate carrier and stuff, this will definitely save you, especially when you start loading it with like water, mags, and all oh, the yeah. other stuff. It's going to eventually start weighing down on you, especially towards the end of the day. And this will definitely help prevent some of the fatigue. Yep. Yeah, and then moving down to the sides, I am running a Feral Concepts. This is a Slickster bungee. Yeah, I think it's called the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I used to run the SKD Tactical Pig yeah. cummerbund, which was really nice. It's nice and elastic. And the reason why I stuck towards that is because I love the way it hugs your body. Okay. And so when you know you're running like a Molly cummerbund or whatnot, oftentimes you have to go to the back of the plate here and adjust it for, for like the, yeah. the your size. But for this, I just need to just velcro it together. Super simple. Just throw it into the back, and I'll just wrap it on the front and it just hugs you right in place because it's elastic yep. and the reason why I moved away from the pig is actually because the Feral Concepts one actually has these little pockets yeah, no that you can load stuff so, so I know a lot of people they throw in like tourniquets magazines if you need it and more importantly for me the radio so I'm running a Baofeng UV5R just yeah. like you yep. yeah with an extended battery and an antenna and I just keep it right here and for me I keep my radio in the front because I'm able to turn it on or turn it off yep. whenever I need to I can adjust the volume all on it yep. If I need to, and also, especially in Milsim operations, when I'm playing out for a weekend, oftentimes our squad would be changing frequencies as we go. Yeah. Because sometimes when we die and we like lay on the floor because we're dead or whatnot, yeah. sometimes the enemy will come up and like they'll actually look into your radio frequency. Oh, really? Uh, right. Yeah. So they can listen in. So we're always changing channels on our radio, just oh, nice. yeah, just so that they don't yeah know what's mm -hmm. going on. And then let's see. It yeah. Does. But. Other than that, it's very slick. I don't like having anything on my sides, so that's the reason why I'm not, I'm not running any extra mags or anything on the side, just because, again, I'm primarily, my reloads are on my hip, and my holster's on my other side, my pistol, side. so I don't want anything intruding in on my sides. Yeah. Yeah, and again, super low pro profile. It hugs you nice and tight. It almost feels like it's warming up the empty space of what's left <laughs> in my heart. Finally, going to the back of my plate carrier, on the back panel, I'm running the Condor Tide Pool hydration carrier. It's a bit of a smaller hydration carrier. I would say it's equivalent of like those mini maps that you see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I don't want to pay like $300 just for a stupid back panel. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the Condor one's like the tenth of the price, like 30 bucks. Oh, yeah. I, I think it looks really clean. And just, it comes just with how, the hydration. Yeah, bottle, just right? how, yeah, just how minimalistic it looks on the back. 
and how it, it conforms to you know the dimensions of the plate carrier. I think it's super sleek. And yes, it does come with a hydration bladder and a hose. And so as you can see over here, I'm running a little hydration bladder routed through the loops in the plate carrier. Normally, if I'm playing during like a day game or whatnot, I do not run hydration. I do okay. not, yeah, just because it throws off the balance of my plate carrier, just because it's very back heavy. Yeah. And also, I don't like to hear or feel the water like sloshing around as you run. Mm. And also, on top of that, if I if I like drink water and I run and stuff, I like I cramp up. Oh really? So I actually do not like drinking water in the field, especially during a day a day game. Okay. But on a milsum event, especially if I'm going on long, longer patrols or whatnot, maybe I'll throw like a little bit of water in there. Yeah. But mostly, actually, I if I need to run water, I'll throw it into a bottle in the back. Okay. Yeah, like, just because like milsum must they use that for like revives and stuff like that. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, and and on top of that, like I just don't want to get in the habit of constantly like sipping on water as I move because I'll cramp up. So most of the time, I'll just tuck it right here. The bladder is usually dry and empty. If I need to run anything on the back panel, it's usually just things that I don't need immediate access to. Yep. So if my teammates like throw something in there that we need to save for later, I'll do it. And also mounted onto the Molly space of my back panel, I have two Condor magazine pouches, so single magazine pouches, and I store extra magazine there for my buddies. So it's a buddy bag system. Nice. So for instance, if we're playing a really long like whole day event, or if you're playing a Milsim game or whatnot, uh, oftentimes ammo is a big issue. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Definitely. especially if you don't want to carry around like a bunch of BBs on you, this is a really nice way to have ammo and stuff for your friends. So if you're a bit stingy like me and don't like to give out magazines for free to your friends, you can usually just have them. If they have extra magazines, they can throw it on you. Yep. So that way, when they're out of ammo and they're out of ammo on their plate carriers or their belts or whatnot, they can pull it off from your back. Very nice. Yeah. It's actually a really nice system. I've seen a lot of people do that before, and it, I will say it has uh, come in handy. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, he does it with his own magazines, mm -hmm. but there have been plenty of times where I've run out of magazines, and he's just like, here, on the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, very <laughs> helpful. Yeah, very helpful. And I think especially for a lot of us that only exclusively run mid caps and no high caps, yeah, ammo does become an issue later on, especially if you're playing longer games. Okay guys, so that pretty much concludes our plate carrier setup for this video. And as you can already tell, we put a lot of thought into the process as to what we exactly put on our plate carriers. Like we said in our previous videos, your first setup, especially with plate carriers, is not gonna be perfect the first time around. And in order to get there, it's gonna require you guys a lot of time of practicing on and off the field and playing and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. And so especially for our examples, you know, we didn't build these kits overnight. And so we've added each piece individually one by one and see what works for us. We can place it exactly where we need it to be to optimize it to how we play. And we encourage you guys to do the same. Yep. And if you happen to like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that big red button so you can stay tuned for every time we upload a new video. We are uploading on Mondays and Fridays, so stay tuned for that. Comment below what you like about our play carriers, what you would change, and how you run your personal play carriers. We love you guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Mm-hmm.